Next channel, because I have a word from God. Mark the eighth chapter. I'm sorry, Mark the eighth chapter. Mark the eighth chapter. I'm going to read the 34th verse. I'm going to skip the 35th verse and read the 36th verse. It says, and, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The 36th verse says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. 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 Not too hard. If you don't mind, get your elbow and do your neighbor like this. And say, neighbor, the world is not enough. Amen. The world is not enough. As Jesus, when Jesus was talking uh, in uh, Mark uh, 34 down to the 36th verse, he was talking to the disciples, letting them know, no matter what kind of position you have in life, that the, wor that the world is not enough. Amen. And you know how people prosper in life. Sometimes they like they forget about the Lord. Right. They get a nice little lawnmower. They won't come to church on Sunday. They stay home and cut their grass. <laughs> Let everybody know they got a pretty green John Deere tractor out there cutting grass. You know, because they don't prosper a little bit and, and they forgot about the Lord. Besides so waiting to another day, uh, to make provision to cut their grass, they're going to stay home and not assemble themselves together as one in the house of God, you know, and cut their grass. You know, you see people that have been blessed with nice cars, with you know, nice rims on there, and uh, nice speakers, and they'll stay home on Sunday morning and wash their car. Right. Then come to the house of and God and praise them for what he done uh, blessed them with. But what profit a man to stay home, to wash his car and cut his grass and and the watch sports and the, and, and the cook or whatever they claim they have to do then to come to church. What would it profit them? Especially if their soul is not saved. All things that's going to profit them is to turn me in hell. Now I guarantee you, my brother, if your soul is not right with God, I don't care what you done uh, obtain in life, it would not get you to heaven. I don't care how much tithes and offerings you pay, that won't get you to heaven. It'll get you your blessing on one standpoint because I don't care how much you pay your tithes and offer. If you don't love your brother sitting beside you this morning, you still curse with a curse. Amen. See, y'all, being blessed with God, is it comes with uh, a chain reaction. Loving one another, helping one another, and not backstabbing your brothers and, uh, your brothers and sisters. Amen. See, uh, you can't half-step the Bible. You got to do the, uh, you got to follow the Bible's instructions to get God's blessing. Now, I am reminded, talking about the world is not enough, Luke, the 15th chapter, about the prodigal son. You know the, about the story about the prodigal son? As a father that had uh, two sons. One of them came and asked for, in, in, for his inheritance. And the father was nice enough to go ahead to give the son what was coming to him. And as the son got what was coming to him, the son left home. He went to a poor country. And the Bible, you know, says that uh, as he went to the, into the poor country in the 15th chapter of Luke, it says that the, in the 13th verse, and many and not many days after the young, self, the young son gathered to, all together and took his journey into a poor country, there wasted his substance in Ruchus, uh, uh, right, thank you, Pastor, living. And people do that today. And I don't know what, how he wasted his money. It could have been on alcohol. It could have been on partying all night long. It could have been on women. You know, men waste some money on some women. Amen. And it could be on drugs, 
But the prodigal son came groatless and homeless. And he found out after all that he had done, all the money that he had spent and the friends that he had had, that the world was not enough. It goes on in the 14th verse, it says, And there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began in want. And they say he went to, a, to join himself to a citizen of that country. And that citizen sent him into the fields, I mean, into the yeah, fields to feed the swines. And it goes on in that 16th verse and says, No man gave unto him. I'm pretty sure when he had plenty of money that he had everybody around him, uh, friends, women, or whatever, and they probably catered to him. But as soon as he came homeless and brokenless, I'm pretty sure his friends were like the disciples when Jesus was on the cross. They were somewhere in the background. And people will uh, desert you when you seem like when you're down to your last dime. When it seems like you on the bed of affliction, some people forget about you. Some people don't want to deal with you. But one thing I like about the prodigal son, the Bible tells us that he came to his senses. And a lot of people in the church need to wake up and come to their senses. Amen. It's no matter uh, what you got in your life. There's no use coming to church like you uh, got it going on. Because sickness can come and, and welcome the take back man. Sickness can come and next thing you know when you can go to the bank each week and get a thousand dollars out and blow it that it'll take all that away. Go on in the Luke the 16th chapter. I'm reminded about the rich man. Amen. The Bible said he was clothed in purple linen. Some, he uh, he fed sumptuously every day. The rich man had everything that he wanted. But the Bible said there was a beggar laying at the gate. I mean, laying, uh, a beggar named Lazarus. That's right, laying at his gate. Amen. Full of sores. All Lazarus wanted was a crumb from the rich man's table. And the rich man thought so low of Lazarus that he wouldn't even give Lazarus crumbs from his table. But the Bible tells me that the rich man died. <laughs> and Lazarus died. See, this let me know you weak what you sow. And while the rich man, the Bible said the rich man was tormented. I mean, he lifted up his eyes in hell. He wanted, he sent a message to Abraham. Tell Lazarus to dip, let, let him dip his finger in some water for just a drop will get on my tongue. But Abraham told the rich man, oh, I can't do that. There's a barrel between us in the hell. And I cannot send you anything. And then you cannot send me anything. Lord have mercy. I'm glad that Jesus had a, got a barrel between him between us and hell. That lets me know Satan, Satan only do so much. And I came to the knowledge the most that he does to us is what we let him do. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And, and uh, it goes on that in the 25th verse of the Luke, the 16th chapter, and it says, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in, in thy lifetime receivest thou good things. And likewise, Lazarus with evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Somebody in here is a living witness that you've been treated like hell, but in the midst of it all, God comforted you. Somebody in here know that uh, somebody been uh, in here have experienced backstabbing, but through it all, God gave you a peace of mind. Somebody in here been left alone. Friends don't walk away, but they found God be a friend when your friends don't walk away. Somebody in here know this morning that the world is not enough when your friends walk away. Jesus will walk with you. When mom and daddy stop holding your hand, you know that God will hold your hand. 
I don't care how good mama and daddy are is to you. That's not enough. I don't care how your bank account look. That's not enough. Because the world, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. I don't know about you, but he didn't give it to me. Lord have mercy. I'm going to Matthew, the 26th chapter, by Judas. You know about uh, old man Judas? Uh, uh, he, he said, uh, Matthew, the 26th chapter, 14 verse, one of the, the 12 disciples called Judas went on to the chief priest. The 15th verse says, and he said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenant with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, he saw opportunity to betray him. See, at this time, Judas was focused on worldly possessions. He was focused on setting Jesus up for a trap, which he proceeded. But if Judas was here this morning, he would tell you that the world is not enough. And don't betray Jesus because you got a nice looking house. Don't betray Jesus because you got a fine ride. Don't portray Jesus because you got nice clothes. Don't portray Jesus because you make 40 or 50,000 a year on your job. Because your job could close down Tuesday morning. What would you stand in? So you have to look sooner or later to the hill which come to your help. I tell you, there's no help in the world. Because they'll stand with you one day, they'll stand and they'll slide to the side one day. But I tell you, if you're walking and talking with Jesus uh, and telling him all about your cares, uh, he will never believe you and he will never forsake you. Can I get a witness in here? Somebody know that the world is not enough. I am reminded when Jesus was traveling uh, in John the fourth chapter, when Jesus was departing, uh, departed again into Galilee, he had to go through a city called Samaria. And, and uh, he found himself near the ground that Jacob gave his son. And it goes on in 6 verse says, And being weary uh, uh, with his journey, set thus on a well. And while Jesus was sitting on the well, on the well uh, relaxing, there came a Samaritan lady to draw some water from Jacob's well. And... Uh, uh, it goes on in the name verse, it says, The woman uh, uh, says, For the Jews have no dealing with the uh, Samaritans. Because, see, Jesus had asked the woman to give him a drink of water. And uh, the woman uh, told Jesus, because uh, she was surprised that Jesus was talking to her, because the Jews and Samaritans wasn't walking on one accord. I tell you, when people on your job won't talk with you, Jesus will. Uh, when the people in the church, uh, we try to speak to them, throw their head up in the air. Uh, uh, Jesus will talk, speak to you back. Uh, when people on the choir don't want to act right, uh, get at you because they can't lead their song. Uh, I tell you, Jesus will deal with you. Uh, I don't know about you, but when you're outcast, uh, it seems like nobody don't want to mess with you. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, I tell you, Jesus will uh, talk to you. Jesus will. Uh, be there with you. Jesus will. Yes, he will. <laughs> Sit down and talk to you a little while. Somebody know in the midnight hour, uh, Jesus was there for you. Uh, somebody know in your job, uh, Jesus will be there for you. Somebody know in your home, uh, Jesus will be there for you. I don't know about nobody else, uh, but Jesus has been there for me. Uh, I got a question for you. Have you been there for you? Have you called on him? And he showed up. Uh, and he showed out. Uh, dried your eyes. Uh, in the midnight hours. Uh, rock you. 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 Uh, <laughs> when you could not sleep. Yes, he did. Rock you when you could not sleep. So when you feel like you're all alone. Like the Samaritan woman. Nobody don't want to deal with you. Don't worry, you got a friend called Jesus. Uh, they call him Mary's little baby. Somebody called him a bright and morning star. Uh, somebody called him wheel in the middle of a wheel. Uh, somebody says, fire! Shut up in my bones. Uh, somebody says, my lily! 
Lord of Valley. Ha. Somebody said, ha. he's my mama. Ha. Oh. Somebody said, he's my daddy. Ha. Somebody said, he's my sister and my brother. Ha. Somebody said, ha. I put my trust in him because he'll stand by my side. Ha. Somebody said, Somebody said he's food on the table. Yes, he is. And went on in the 14th verse. Oh, the Jesus and the Samaritan woman saw talk about water. Ha. And Jesus letting her know that the world is not enough. Ha. And they got to talking about this living water ha, that spring up in you every now and then. Ha. This living water, Jesus was telling her, the woman at the well about, ha. it'll give you joy. Ha. It'll give you a peace of mind. Ha. It'll give you happiness ha, when you're sad. Ha. It'll, give a, it'll, give you a, it'll make your heart rejoice ha, when you're being talked about. Yes, it will. This living water, oh, which is Jesus. Have you got living water this morning? Have you ever sprung up in you like a spring? Oh, yes. And Jesus went on and asked the woman to call her husband. And Jesus and the woman said, in that 17 verse, says, and the woman asked and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For those you may been married before, huh? don't worry about what men may say. Huh? Because Jesus did not put down this woman that been married before. Huh? Jesus told her that this, she didn't have no other husband. Huh? And the one that she was with then was not her husband. I want you to know, uh, men and women, huh? boys and girls, huh? uh, uh, you don't have no you don't have no security in men and women. Huh? I don't care how good you think your marriage is. Huh? I don't care how much your husband take you out to eat. I don't care how much your wife cook for you. Huh? That that's not enough. Huh? You need Jesus in your marriage. Huh? If you want it to be solid as a rock. Huh? You need Jesus. Huh? You need to walk on one accord. Huh? You need to talk with each other. Huh? Work situations out when they arise. Huh? Then what you need to do. Huh? Fall down on your knees. Uh, fall down on your knees. Uh, oh, and tell God about it. Uh, and he will bring it together. Uh, I'm reminded of Acts, the third chapter. I ain't got too much longer. Uh, and I'm going to go back to my seat. Uh, I remind the Acts, the third chapter, uh, the first uh, verse, when uh, Peter and John uh, was going into the temple for prayer, uh, and they came up on a man was lame from his mother's womb, uh, was at the gate. Uh, he was uh, when people was going into the temple, it was bad by asking them for some money. Uh, but Peter and, uh, and John told the man, uh, "Silver and gold I have none, but such as I, I give thee in the name of Jesus uh, of Nazareth. Rise up and walk." Uh, I tell you, uh, when you're sick, uh, by, uh, your body racking with pain. Uh, I tell you, you might have an insurance policy, but that's not enough. Uh, doctor may prescribe you prescriptions, uh, but that's not enough. Uh, I tell you, the world is not enough. Uh, we got sickness in your body. Uh, call on Jesus. Uh, if you call on him, uh, I tell you, he'll come. Uh, he'll come by your hospital bed. Uh, he'll come by your bed at home. Uh, he'll heal your body. Uh, yes, you may be on diet. But keep on calling on Jesus. Uh, he will. Uh, he will touch your body. Yes, you may have a little counsel in your body. Uh, but if you tell Jesus about it, uh, if you tell him about it, uh, I guarantee you, uh, he'll touch your body. Uh, I don't care how bad your arthritis is cut up on you. If you tell him about it, uh, he'll touch that arthritis. Uh, yes, he will. Uh, I want to bring around uh, one more witness. Uh, this woman had the issue of blood. Uh, uh, she tried everything. Uh, went to many doctors. Uh, was on many, uh, me uh, on uh, a lot of medicine. Uh, but she heard about Jesus. Uh, she heard about Jesus. Uh, and she heard about Jesus. Uh, something happened. Uh, she had to make her way through a crowd. Uh, every now and then. Uh, I tell you, when you're going through your situations, uh, you got to push your way through your troubles. Uh, you got to push your way through your Try you gotta push away from being talked about. You gotta push away of being criticized. Push away huh, through your situations and watch 
Jesus uh, show up and show out. Uh, I don't know about nobody else, uh, but I'm going to hold on to his hand. Because uh, the world is not enough, uh, I'm going to hold on to his hand. Because uh, when my job lay me off, uh, I still got Jesus. Uh, I'm going to hold on to his hand because my sickness in my body. I still got Jesus. Uh, I'm going to hold on to his hand because I ain't got a dime in my pocket. I still got Jesus. Because uh, the world is not enough. Uh, I don't care what you're going to try. Uh, drugs cannot help you. Nobody else. Let me see you wave your hand if you don't need nobody else. 